Eagles rookie minicamp has begun, numbers have been given out, and Agent Zero has arrived, and it's no other than DeAndre Swift, and I love it. Dallas still stinks. Yo, by the way, King Ding back here, and hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. So the Eagles are having rookie minicamp starting today. Numbers have been dished out, and Agent Zero has arrived, and his name is DeAndre Swift. Is DeAndre Swift not setting himself up for a monster, monster year? It's just crazy. And what about Debo Samuel? This guy's still crying about the NFC Championship game months after. I have never seen such babies, even more than the Cowboys, as the San Francisco 49ers are. But we're going to get into all of it. But before we do that, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. More importantly, make sure you subscribe to the most censored, the most throttled pause. Eagles content creator in all of the internet, and if you've been subscribed for a while, I just want to thank you for all the support you give to me, especially through the throttling, and yesterday, it hurt, because we got throttled a lot, pause, but I want to thank you guys in all seriousness. Now, uh, before I get into uh, the draft numbers and, and Agent Zero, uh, we got to talk about one Dan Arnold. Now, I had a video, and I was going to put it out last night about the signing for Dan Arnold. And I realized when I went back and I, I looked at the video, I called him Tom Arnold the whole way through. That's right, Tom Arnold, Roseanne Barr's ex-husband. I called him the whole time. So I'm like, I ain't putting that out. It's Tom Arnold. That's disrespectful. So we didn't. But the Eagles did sign a tight end yesterday, Dan Arnold. Uh, Dan Arnold, he had nine catches last year, 135 yards, and uh, averaged 15 yards a catch uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, he's been with the Jags for the last two years. Before that, he was with Carolina, Arizona, and New Orleans. Uh, his best year, as you can see right here, was in 2020. He had 31 receptions for the Cardinals for 438 yards. And then uh, 2021, he had 28 catches for 324 yards with the Jaguars. Last year, I think with the addition of Evan Ingram with Jaguars, his role was greatly diminished. So he comes in to the tight end room. And really, to be quite honest with you, I mean, we'll, we'll see what he does. Um, the Eagles are going to have to, uh, they're going to have to show us, you know, kind of what he has. Will he win that backup tight end job? I don't know. I really like Calcaterra. I really think Calcaterra has a chance to be a pretty decent tight end and develop. So we're going to see how it goes. And I know a lot of people are, are, are soured and have soured and, and want to give up on Tyree Jackson. But he was coming back from a pretty big injury last year, trying to learn a new position. Uh, he showed flashes before his injury. I'd like to see how he plays this year. I'm not saying he's going to be the guy. I'm not even saying he's going to be great or going to develop. But to me, this is the make or break year for Tyree Jackson. I hope coming back from his injury, I hope he goes out and he shows us something. Because there's no question the guy does not have uh, skills. The guy has a ton of skills. So I would love... Absolutely love to see uh, him rise up, Calcaterra rise up, and now you have Arnold, who, you know, will, should give us a decent battle as the number two tight end. We definitely need a backup tight end, so it's it's important. Now, one of the big things going on today is obviously Eagles rookie minicamp. They will be taking the field in probably about an hour. Um, we'll talk about what goes on there later. We'll see what kind of videos come out and stuff like that. But uh, Eagles rookie minicamps, and one of the things they did today was they told us uh, the rookie numbers as well as some of the uh, new veterans numbers on the team. So I wanted to go through some of these, okay? We'll start with the rookies first. So the rookies, Jalen Carter is going to wear number 98. He was 88 in college. I think 98 makes total sense. I love that number. I think it's a perfect fit for him. Nolan Smith will be number three. I think that's a really cool number for him. It just seems to fit. Sidney Brown, 43. Now, I, I'm not sure Sidney Brown even wanted 43, but that's what he's getting. 
Tyler Steen, he's going to wear number 40, uh, number 56, I'm sorry. He'll be wearing number 56. Kylie Ringo, a Johnny Ringo. You look like somebody just walked all over your grave. Uh, he'll be number 37. Tanner McKee will be number 10. And then Mauro Ojomo, he will be wearing number 72. A little, a little surprise, 72 is still available. Um, I thought, I thought, uh, maybe they would, uh, Retire Trey Thomas, but maybe not. Uh, maybe not. But uh, he'll be wearing number 72. As far as the Eagles veteran players who are coming in, um, DeAndre Swift. This is, this is the coolest one of all. DeAndre Swift is going to wear number zero. He is agent zero. I, I think having agent zero be a running back is a great thing. We can do a lot with that, a lot of talking with that. Uh, but DeAndre Swift, he's agent zero. And I really think... Two things. One, I I really want to get a a DeAndre Swift jersey and Kelly Green zero, you know. But I don't want to buy a jersey that the guy's not going to be there next year. But God, I would love to get that number. I hope somehow he he works a multi contract out with the Eagles so so I can justify buying it. But DeAndre Swift. Agent Zero, I think DeAndre Swift is setting himself up perfectly, perfectly to be to be having a huge year. Uh, he's with the Eagles. He's going to wear zero. I think I think he's ready for for a new uh, for a, you know for a, a fresh start. So it's going to be cool. Marcus Mariota, he'll be going to number eight. Olimata Zacharias. I sorry, I said I, I know I screwed his name up, but I'm sorry. But he's going to try to make 13 great again. We need somebody to make that number great again because Nelson Stinkelar screwed it up as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, you know, we got it. We got it. We need a 13. We need a 13. You know, we thought Fogel might have done it, but Fogel didn't last. Rashad Penny, 23. I always think of 23. For some reason, I always think of Heath Sherman. Some of you guys probably think about C.J. Gardner Johnson. But I'm thinking way back in the day, Heath Sherman. Terrell Edmonds, 26. That was Miles' number. That's kind of weird. Uh, Justin Evans, 30. Greedy Williams will wear 38. Nicholas Morrow, 41. And Contavious Street will wear number 97. I believe that was his, I believe that was his number. Um, I think that's what he wore last year. Anyway, so he's just bringing his number over. But that that is the new numbers for these guys. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be one hell of a pre. I can't wait till training camp. I cannot wait. Um, obviously, the Eagles are having rookie mini camp. They've invited some guys to to come out, try out for the team, and and we're going to see how it goes. Nick Sirianni says this is going to be a very physical camp. So so we're going to see, and I look forward to what's coming out of that. Also, I got to talk about this Debo Samuel thing really quick. Now I usually could give two craps about what you know what these guys say and things like that but this guy just doesn't shut up i mean literally like this guy he said james bradbury's trash i don't know how anybody can sit there and say james bradbury's trash when james bradbury literally shut down pretty much everybody he went up against last year seriously he shut everybody down Everybody down last year he went with what what because they hold in the Super Bowl somehow he's trash. I think that's insane. But Debo Samuel says he's trash. He also says that the Eagles are his most hated team. This is what Debo Samuel said. He said, My most hated team is the Eagles right now, 100 percent All the trash talk coming from the Eagles fan base and the players. You just get tired of that. Like, dude, like what trash talk is he talking about? The fact that Hassan Reddick, one play, devastated their whole, whole roster. He did go on to say that uh, that they would have won the game until they only had a play with 10 players. How can you possibly say that? This guy is, is a baby. This team is a bunch of babies. I'm sorry, it is. We're still talking about this uh, in May. And they're still crying and they're still bitter about what happened. It's not our fault that your quarterback got hurt. It wasn't like Purdy got hurt on the sideline warming up. Okay, I could see if he's on the sideline and he's warming up and, and he's throwing and his, he throws his elbow out or his, 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 his shoulder goes out or something happens. He gets hurt. He can't play. Maybe he's coming out of the field. He trips in the tunnel, breaks his ankle, can't play, whatever it is. I could understand in that perspective. But when it is the game and Hassan Reddick goes in 
and destroys him and takes him out of the game. That that is not that is not uh, some cheap way of winning. That is the Eagles inflicting damage on your team. That's part of the game. That's the Eagles. You got to give the Eagles credit for that. And I don't know what fans he's talking about. No fans are talking any crap. And it just goes to show you that the NFC East is the best division in football. It's the best division, I think, in all sports. You got the San Francisco 49ers who are more worried about a team that plays in a completely different division than them. And that's who they're focusing on. There's no rivalry like the Eagles-Cowboys rivalry, Eagles-Giants rivalry, uh, Eagles-Washington, even though they stupid change, they got a stupid name now and they got a stupid owner and all that stuff. But, you know, the NFC East rivalries are real. Dallas-Giants. Dallas, Washington, Washington, New York. I mean, those are real rivalries. We we don't worry about the San Francisco 49ers. We will beat the crap out of them again in due time. I just think it's unbelievable this guy's still crying. And I don't think the Eagle fans have said anything. If he really thinks that the Eagle fans have talked a lot of crap since that NFC Championship game, boy, he ain't seen nothing yet. Because it, it get, we're a lot worse than that. And uh, I think the 49ers, I mean, I just think that they, those guys can't get over the fact that they got beaten at their own game. They thought they were the big, big Mahas. They thought that they were going to come in and destroy the Eagles, inflict their will. I mean, Kittle pretty much said as much. And it just didn't happen. So I can't wait to beat the crap out of the 49ers again. I really can't. Uh, but, you know... Keep crying, keep crying. James Bradbury's trash. Are you crazy? James Bradbury had a hell of a year. I'm sorry. That 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 play at the end of the Super Bowl was that was a bogus call. That was a bogus call. But anyways, Eagles rookie mini camp. The players' numbers are out, and uh, we'll we'll see what comes out of the camp. Uh, hopefully, uh, you guys will. I'm pretty sure you're gonna see me later. With that said, take care. Talk to you later, of course. Don't be a thing, but remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it. All right, so yesterday I said that I was going to show this clip of the Cowboy fans, Mark Holmes, during a stream, uh, you know, with their reaction and how frustrated they really were when the Eagles drafted Nolan Smith. I left the clip out. What a moron. What a dingbat. So here it is. My apologies. Here's the clip. Denzel Washington out. Like Russell Maryland and Leon Lett. Okay. This the Eagles. Kelly Porter. Eagles. There it is. There it is. Nolan Smith. Nolan Smith. Okay.